Good morning, folks. Welcome back to the farm. Kelly's off on a four-day weekend this weekend, so we are going to get some stuff done. Stick around with us, and we'll take you along. So one of my boss's wives, Natalia, she had extra tomatoes in her garden and she knew we were looking for some so she gave us the hookup. We've got predominantly Roma tomatoes here. She gave us some assorted uh, varieties of cherry tomato and she also gave us some peppers. So we'll probably pickle these peppers for her and send them back to her in a can or in a jar. So we got to get all these tomatoes washed up and we're going to core and score them so we can get them in the freezer and add to our batch. And then we also have some probably out in the garden that we need to pick so we'll do that as well. Got all of our beautiful tomatoes washed. We're going to save these big slicers. Probably take a couple to mom. She's been enjoying them there at the nursing home. And we might make a tomato tart out of these. So we're going to core and score these, put them in this bag so we can get them in the freezer. Now if you're wondering why I'm coring and scoring these tomatoes, because we're going to put these in the freezer and the good thing about putting them in the freezer is if all your tomatoes don't ripen at the same time you don't have to do a bunch of little batches when you can you can save all these up in the freezer so when you get a big enough batch to do one bulk canning you can do it and now after these are frozen once they thaw out the skins will slip right off of the tomato so you don't have to put them in hot water and blanch them and then shock them in cold water and go through all that process. The freezing process does that for you. And they'll peel right off and you can dump them right into the cooker and go. You can see now we got enough for a pretty good batch of tomatoes. That's good news. We'll most likely end up doing those tomatoes maybe later on in the weekend or Monday. So when we get that done, we'll show you that process, and once the video is posted, we'll tack that video on the end of this video. Kelly's making a pillowcase for her favorite couch pillow over there. The pillowcase on it was getting pretty old. She's making good use of her new showing machine. Ruby's down here hanging out with Mom. Is it cooler down here, Rubes? Yeah? Well, let's go out to the garden and see if the uh, rest of our tomatoes are ready to pick. I sh they should be super close. If they're close enough, we'll probably just pick them anyway. Let them ripen up. Still getting tomatoes off of these. These plants just keep chugging along. They even got some green tomatoes on them. I was going to pull all these up. If you remember, if you've been with the channel, you know these got hailed out. But they're just hanging on by their fingernails. So we're still getting tomatoes off of them. They're determinant, so they really just don't want to just regrow like our big indeterminate tomatoes over there. And you can kind of see the difference. These are determinant, so they pretty much stop growing. The celebrities are kind of semi determinate, they're kind of halfway in between. And you can see these vines aren't as vigorous as the complete indeterminate tomatoes. But they are doing better than the complete determinate tomatoes. They're kind of halfway in between. We've got some, some great slicer tomatoes in here. Some nice big ones. Loads and loads of cherry tomatoes. Bunches and bunches. These are sweet 100s. 
They grow very well. Lots and lots of cherry tomatoes. We'll pick pick these and send most of them to my cousin's restaurant. Just about got enough basil for another round of pesto. So that'll be nice. We are also going to come out this weekend in the next day or two and pick peppers and process those as well. There's all of our aromas. They're not the most beautiful tomatoes, but they will can up just fine. Now we took one vine in the garden, we just pulled it and put it out of its misery because it was done. And there's still some more tomatoes out there, believe it or not. Well, same process with these. I won't bore you with the, the details and video on that. Able to get one more full bag, so that's great news. So off to the freezer this one goes. All right, we just got back from a football game. Had a very successful football game, I might add. So now we're going to take care of these peppers before I go to bed. We've got these peppers that were sent with us with all the tomatoes. There's some assorted peppers in here. You got some banana peppers looking things and some jalapenos probably. So I'm going to seed and core these and cut them into uh, small rings. And we'll get these packed in a jar and then we'll make up some brine. Got our peppers chopped up. We came out to a half pint of chopped peppers. So let's make our brine in this cup. I have a half a cup of regular white vinegar, half a cup of cider vinegar, and then in our saucepan here I have a quarter cup of sugar, quarter teaspoon of celery seed, and a quarter teaspoon of mustard seed. We'll dump the liquid in here. We'll heat this to a boil, uh, dissolving that sugar, and once it's boiling, we'll pour it into this jar. We'll preheat this jar so it's not a real temperature shock when we pour it in and uh, that'll be about it we are almost to a boil I put our jar in a coffee cup fully full of our scalding hot uh, tap water and also kind of sanitized our lid too so when that's ready we'll pour it in this jar to the proper headspace now the recipe for this is obviously a lot bigger. I used a quarter of a recipe since all we have is this jar. It only takes about a cup of brine in there at the most. But uh, I'll show you the full recipe right now, which obviously you can scale up as big as you need. But here it is. Our mixture is boiling pretty good, so we're going to give it a little stir. And then we're going to get it in the jar. Let me get my little handle thingy here. can turn our fire off. And get this poured right into our jar. Okay, we're right up to our head space there. So we'll wiggle that around a little bit. Get the air bubbles out of it. Looks like we need to top it up just a hair. About right there. So let's get the lid on it. All right, we'll tighten that up. Got our lid snug down really good. Ouch, it's warm. We're gonna turn that upside down. We'll sterilize the head space down in here just like the old school people used to do. Now they're gonna put this jar in the fridge and use it right away, so we don't have to get real crazy about the water bath and stuff like that. But uh, this will sit here till the morning, and when we come back, it'll be all sealed up. Good morning, folks. Look at our beautiful canned peppers. Get a label on those. We'll get those to Natalia, who uh, donated all of these fantastic tomatoes and stuff to us. Good morning, pups. Kelly's out pulling weeds in the roses.
Bees come bumbling down. It's supposed to be 100 degrees today. So while it's still fairly cool, I'm going to go out in the garden and go through the pepper patch and pick whatever peppers are ready. And then we're going to store those. I got some beautiful peppers. Some of them were a little immature, but as I was going through the plant the little limb broke off or whatever so I just went ahead and picked them got some slicer tomatoes for breakfast but we've got so many more peppers out there in the garden but they're not quite ripe yet but we'll take care of the ones that are we put those peppers in the house where it's cool so before it gets too hot outside I want to come out here in the shop and I need to sort through our onions They've been uh, drying out here in the shop, letting those papery skins get nice and dry. Now, as I've been coming out here and getting onions to cook with, I've noticed that there's some that have a little rot on them. So that's what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to sort through these and anything that's got uh, enough rot where I can't save any part of the onion, we're going to get thrown out. And then the rest of them will get put in baskets and... We'll get those in the root cellar. Got our white onions sorted. We came out about 50%. Those all had rot on them. But these are nice, beautiful onions. We'll get these down to the root cellar. We're not going to have any near that success with the purples because I've been going through those as I've been needing them. A lot of those purples got rot. As I suspected, the purples did not fare well at all. And the yellow's not much better. But let me show you what we're dealing with. You can see our onion is good all the way around except for this one side. So what I'm thinking happened when I pulled them in the garden and left them sitting on the ground to pre-dry, the ground was very moist because remember we were getting cooler temperatures at that time and they just would not dry out in the garden. So that's when I brought them in. You're only supposed to put them in the garden for a couple days anyway, maybe a week. But it was just really moist out there. And I think that's what happened was this was the part that was laying on the ground. And it never dried out. And we ran into a lot of this. And then as it progresses, it just takes the whole onion eventually. But we found some that we can get, you know, half to three quarters of an onion so what we'll do with these yellows and reds, we'll probably process all these today. These are the only ones that are really uh, good enough to go in the root cellar where they'll last any period of time at all. I think next year, the day we pull the onions, we'll bring them right uh, into the barn or shop, let them dry in there where there's not as much moisture and see how that works. Uh, it's a shame some of those need to go in the compost, but all in all, with the number of onions we had in the garden, if you remember, we had this full, complete row. That's probably 25% of what we grew, because we've been using lots of onions uh, fresh, so we've got quite a bit of them used. But I'll take 75% anytime. Well, we're out here by the chicken coop. Look at Kelly's clematis out here. Crazy! Starting to flower. It's getting beautiful out here. It almost looks like star jasmine, but it provides wonderful shade for the chickens here in the summer. And then this will all die off in the winter where the sun can get in when they need the sun. When it's cold. I got my shop floor back over here. So after I get my wood bin refilled, once the daytime temperatures get a little cooler, we'll fill that up and guess what's going in here. That thing. 
I got a couple front tires on the way for that. They should be within here within a couple days. We'll get those wheels cleaned up and those tires mounted. And then I'm looking for a back tire. One of the tires still holds air. So once that thing becomes a roller, we can get that thing in the shop. All right, well, I think that's the about the extent of the outside work today. Because like I said, it's going to be 100 degrees and it's well on its way. So we're going to go inside and start processing the stuff we pulled out of the garden this morning and those onions that I told you about because the temperature is just skyrocketing out here. Skyrockets in flight. Kelly picked all of this sage from the garden to dry and then she also picked a bunch of her chocolate mint to dry. Now she's getting ready to bake her sourdough focaccia bread. Fantastic. I'll show you when it's done. And I promise someday we'll give you the recipe for this. So good. Got all of our peppers washed. Now I'm just going to core them and seed them. And then we're going to chop them up. While I've been cutting and coring my peppers, Kelly started on the onions. Get the purple onions done. We're going to bag those in one cup increments uh, in some pint vacuum seal bags and then we're going to vacuum seal them. Look at that beautiful rainbow of peppers. Kelly's got her focaccia bread out of the oven. Wow. Can't wait to dig into that. We had a taster. Look how light and airy this stuff is supposed to be for dinner but it's yummy one-handed cut all of our bell peppers and our red onions Kelly's about ready to do the white onions. So while she finishes the white onions up, I'm going to take those other onions down to the root cellar. There's our onions. Nice and cool and dry down here. They'll store for a good long time. We've got more room down here too for butternut squash, acorn squash, stuff like that. Sweet potatoes. Somebody on the, I believe the sweet corn post commented that they didn't think they could you could can sweet corn because it would turn brown because of the sugar but I can assure you it doesn't still nice pretty and yellow there we go folks we got uh, 19 bags of onions uh, we've got 12 bags of bell peppers and I think three or four bags of the purple onion so now what we do is we put these in big Ziploc bags so everything's in one bag so we know what's there and it doesn't get scattered all over the freezer. And then I'll take them down and put them in the freezer. Let's grab the chicken out of the freezer. If you remember we processed those last year. I'm thinking maybe chicken and dumplings tomorrow for dinner. And then I'm starting on dinner for tonight. We're going to have some pesto pasta to go with Kelly's fantastic focaccia bread. And then after that, we're going to go on a date night, going to go see a movie. So, hope you enjoyed hanging out with us today. So, until next time, stay safe, stay healthy. We love you guys. Come back and see us again on Mark Kelly Farm.